Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. It's time for another a live stream. Today is Tuesday, December 12th, 2023. Sorry, I'm running a little bit late, guys, but the box for today that I wanted to open up is called The Runner Box. I know I have the title wrong here for those of you who are attending live. I'll adjust that later for those of you who are LBNLs, later but not live. Um, but I knew that I wanted to open up this today, this up today, um, and I was really looking forward to it because there's probably snacks in here. And then I came all the way down here, and then I realized I didn't know where I put the box. I had put it somewhere else, and I forgot where that other place was. So I was frantically looking all over the house for it. That's the reason for the delay. But we're here, and we got Runner Box. We had one of these earlier this year, maybe right around Black Friday time or before that, earlier in like early November. I thought they were only going to send me the one, but now they've sent me another one. Could be uh, a good last minute gift to get for that runner in your life. I think these are really great, especially for people who are a little bit newer to running and don't have like their go to brands yet. This is a good place to kind of find them or. At least that's what I think it is. So we'll get to it in just a second. But first, let's ahead everyone listening on the podcast, the audio only version. Welcome to you guys. Hopefully you're having a good run today. It is seasonably seasonable weather today here in Crystal Lake. So it was a little bit chilly, but I did test out that John G kit that we got yesterday. Uh, or was it two days ago? Was it yesterday? It must have been yesterday. Anyway, I ran in that. It was really nice. I think those might be my favorite tights for this winter it's early but they're really good they were warm by the end though but it's not it's not that cold yet here so but either way hopefully uh hopefully your tights are not swampy and the weather temp the weather and temperature for your run is nice uh, and for everyone else watching later but not live this is the number one place to uh have your dog get called out i don't have any dogs that i um have like on my waiting list you know Maybe I do, but I forgot where those dogs are in terms of like, if someone said like, I listened to it uh, on audio, can you say hi to my dog? So we'll do hello, good dog with the people that are here today. So if I haven't said hi to your dog before, let's prioritize those people. We'll do that in a little bit. So get ready. Um, but yeah, first let's see who else we got here in the chat. Finny Finn Finn says, hey gang, weird question. I like weird questions. Says, but I'm currently living in the Peruvian Andes. I don't know where this is going. I have a lot of trouble with feral dogs on my run. How do I avoid getting bitten and still train for Boston, LOL? That is a weird question. I have an answer for that. Man via miles ran across the Danube. Not, it doesn't start over in, I don't know where it starts. I have no idea on geography. I grew up in New Jersey, so that explains a lot. But uh, he ran from the Eastern side all the way to the Western side. And he said, some of the days there were a lot of feral dogs and they would attack and so he frequently would carry rocks with him on his run i don't think that he ever threw the rocks at the dog i don't think he really like hit them but he may have used them as a way of scaring them off i don't know that that's a great humane way of doing things i don't know how else to approach that situation though with the feral dogs that was a weird question. You were right, Finny Fin Fin. Hopefully you're staying safe on your training. Uh, and that's quite a turn from our normal Hello Good Dog segment. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, Vanessa Martinez says, carry a collapsible metal baton. That's usually my approach. Uh, I do have a collapsible metal baton. It's called a selfie stick. Uh, and that's always what I kind of think about if I see a dog and they're off leash. Um, a lot of times when I see a dog off leash, I'm not too worried unless the owner tells me, don't worry, they're good off leash. Then I get worried. Um, and I always think, you know what, if anything else happens, hit the record button and then extend the selfie stick and then start swinging. Not to hit them, just to create a little bit of a distance, you know. I have to do that also with the red wing, red tipped are they red winged, red winged blackbirds, those blackbirds that are super territorial. Whenever they got their nests going, they're organized too. Those birds, you'll usually have to wave the selfie stick around. Um, let's see. 
Calvin Wong says, most of us could not fight a medium-sized dog that's appropriately vicious. <laughs> that That is a very strange sentence. I mean, it's hard to argue. Appro what, I don't know what appropriately vicious means. <laughs> Steven C wants to know, isn't there some sort of anti-dog spray? I don't, I don't, I have no idea. But uh, the first time I was in, um, I was in the Tetons to do a Ragnar relay one time and you fly into Jackson Hole. And when you get there, there's this booth over by baggage claim that says bear spray. And apparently they like rent bear spray to you. I don't think you could fly with bear spray. So you have to get it when you arrive and uh, then you can't fly with it again. So you bring it back hopefully unused and then they could just rent it out to the next person this whole the whole time i was there i thought that bear spray was a joke like a practical joke or something like a gag gift but apparently it's a real thing Kamahong says bear spray is expensive too. Is it? I wouldn't know. I never. I didn't use it. And then on that Ragnar relay, I was doing one of the overnight legs, and they were like, "Guys, just to let you know, a mama bear and her cub has been spotted along the route." And I'm like, "And so we're canceling the rest of the night?" And they were like, "No, no. I just want to let you guys know." And I was like, "Oh, geez." That did not seem. They're like, you know, if you're making a lot of noise as you come up, that's going to scare them away. And I'm like, I don't think that's how bears work, but I don't know. It was weird. I did not, get, I did not see the bear. I did not get attacked by the bear. I, clearly, I'm here, so I'm, I was safe. Uh, Will Willing says, Zone 2 base has gotten two to three minutes slower in the past three months. Will it be some reasons? And is it okay to run by feel instead of monitoring the HR? Uh, I think some of the reasons could be that you're fatigued. Um, that's usually the main reason. Other times it happens to me when I'm deep in a training block, which means I'm fatigued. So like, uh, that's something to think about. Is it okay to run by feel instead of monitoring the HR? For me, they should. those two things should mean the same thing. If you've been running sufficiently by heart rate and you've been trying to teach yourself by looking at that heart rate, what easy means, then I feel like you would know that like running by feel is harder than easy. You know, does that make sense? It's kind of like, to, let's step back. So there's a couple of ways to use heart rate as you're in your training. One is to just kind of like look at it, kind of like a speedometer in a car, or I think the better way to look at it is like using, you can use your heart rate to guide your run, just like you would use your GPS to guide your drive right? You could use the phone to direct you how to get from your house to the restaurant or wherever you're trying to go. Now, there's two approaches to that. One could be now I mentally never have to learn where the restaurant is because I'll always use the GPS. The other is I'll use the GPS for a couple of times and then eventually I'll learn where the restaurant is. So if you're at the point where you haven't learned where the restaurant is, then I would not run by feel. I would run by heart rate. That would be my recommendation. Um, because like maybe you haven't been running a lot, but maybe things are really stressful at work or stressful at home or stressful some other way. Um, maybe you're about to get sick. I mean, if you're in the past three months, you know, it could be something else. Maybe there's some other chronic fatigue that's happening. Maybe there's something in the diet that needs to be addressed, right? But I think that that, is a lot I, I would be concerned about that that's because that's quite a bit different i would also du double check um that your heart rate is accurate make sure you're getting a good reading if it's on the wrist then i would suggest buying a a separate heart rate sensor just to be sure but like though what you're suggesting will is just saying like hey i'm getting all these red flags should I address the red flags or should I just hide them? Is kind of what I think is happening here. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
Martha says she hangs a belt. We're going back, going back to dogs and bears, which is a kind of a fun subject. Martha says I hang a bell in my field pack, but I'm not sure it's loud enough to announce my presence or cause it to leave. So what I had ended up doing on that day in the Ragnar relay, there was some other dude running. We both had headlamps, so there, we were pretty, plenty bright. But someone else was running with a Bluetooth speaker, so I just ran behind that person the whole time. My other th thought being, if we really startled them. The bear would be mad at the first person, not the second, maybe. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. Adam says, what animal kills more people than any other? Is it hippopotamus? That's what JC thinks. I like it when you guys bring trivia. That's fun. Uh, Steven C. says, a mosquito. Oh, that's probably true. Mm, I don't know. Interesting. Ooh, Vanessa says, are there, there's a, is there a such thing as ultrasonic? Oh yeah, like the high pitch whistles that humans can't hear. Ultrasonic dog whistle to chase them away, or maybe an air horn. An air horn would be interesting. I don't know. Mm. Sega Dreamcast says, a bear spray is more of a fog. Bears' noses are insanely sensitive, and the idea is to make a wall of spicy fog between you and the bear. I, I can make spicy fog, and if I see a bear on the trail, I'll probably make some spicy fog. <laughs> <laughs> do bears really have that good of a sense of smell? I suppose that they do. I mean, if you think about like a polar bear and how he can hunt stuff from like miles away, I don't know. Sean Devon says, two times I've been taken down by over-friendly dogs on the trails. Yeah, so I go back and forth on it. Like, a lot of the trails that I run, a lot of people walk with their dogs off-leash. And personally, I don't have a problem with it. One, because I carry a stick. But two, I'll, yeah, I feel like it'll probably be fine. But then I'm also like, mm, that dog owner probably knows what's up. That dog owner knows their dog. And if they're putting their dog on a leash, then yeah. Today I ran by a dog that like the owner was super friendly. She was waving at me. She's like pulled over to the side of the path cause we were coming across, it was a flyby, you know? And so she stood over to the side um, and then she did grab her dog's leash kind of tight, but the dog seemed chill. And I got near nearer to her and I said, hi, I waved back. And then the dog lunged, not super hard. I don't think it was angry, but I think it was just chasing, you know? And so I was like, oh, that's a good thing she had her leash held tight, you know? Daniel Estrella says, Toronto's got some wild coyote fox and the famous raccoon all over run routes in the winter. Hmm. A famous, the a coyote and a fox and the raccoon's the famous one? If I, <laughs> D Daniel's talking about a Toronto raccoon and that makes me think about the old John Candy movie, The Great Outdoors. Have you guys seen that one? Much better than the cart. There was a cartoon that followed up as well. It was a kid's show, even though the movie was, was the movie a kid's movie? I don't know. But I just remember the raccoons talked to each other. That was fun. I loved that when that came out. Maybe that was a kid's movie. I don't know. There was bad words in it, though. Um, I, I, there's coyotes in, in Crystal Lake, for sure. We have a ring camera on the door. And ring, for some reason, also wants to be a social network. And uh, people post on ring. And I have the notification set up to come because I want to know if someone's at the door or ringing the doorbell. But also, when people post stuff, into the community message board, it gives me a message. And I get a lot of messages like, hey, did anyone else see a coyote today? I'm like, oh. I have not seen, I've seen more coyotes when I lived in Chicago than I've seen living in Crystal Lake. But I guess I lived in Chicago for almost 20 years. Um, but yesterday, I think I was either, oh, I was coming home from a run and I'm looking down the street and I see two cars slowing down as they go down the street. And I look over and I realize the reason why they slowed down, there was a giant flock of turkeys crossing the road. It had to have been like 30 or 40 turkeys. 
and they were walking across the street. If you were a turkey, why wouldn't you just fly? But anyway, there was a lot, and the cars were honking to try to get the turkeys to move. Those turkeys always trying to block traffic. I think that just must be a thing that they do. I don't know. Vanessa says, uh, The Great Outdoors was a family movie when it came out. I wouldn't show young kids The Great Outdoors movie now, though. <laughs> Uh, and there was a bear in that movie. I don't remember. I'm gonna have to go find that. I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember. I only remember the raccoon, and then I only remember the subsequent cartoon. Hmm. Have to see it. I'll just. I have to find that. Richard Wilson says, turkeys don't fly for the same reason we don't sprint 26.2 miles. I, they just get tired. <laughs> Maybe they fly uh, They fly in the beginning and they get exhausted and after they hit the wall and then they got to walk the rest of the way. <laughs> uh, Adam Torres says, he's seeing coyotes by McCormick Place on the lakefront. Oh, I've never seen them that far south. I've I've seen them up by like north of uh, the track on Mo like a, by Montrose. That's where I've seen them. Like by that so there's like an artificial turf soccer field up there. It was up there. Let's see. Um. Tails in Mileto City. I've seen people tripping with dogs. Yeah, I guess with the leashes and stuff. I've been seeing a lot of ads for the hands-free leashes, either the ones that you wear as a belt, kind of like the cane across ones, and then other ones that you wear over like, like over the shoulder, like a messenger bag. I kind of like those. Mm. Steven see I have a rock that keeps tigers away <laughs> you don't see any tigers here do you <laughs> that's an obscure Simpsons reference mm. all right let's get to the box today's box is from runner box it's at the runner box on Instagram but therunnerbox.com if you want to find them online. Uh, it is a I think it I think you can buy single boxes, but you can also get a subscription as well. Uh, last box that I got from them, I think I'd say more than half of it was useful. Let's see what we got this time. This one says, uh, "May your pace be merry and your strides be light." I like that. That's a cute card. Okay, cool. Wishing you endless smiles and infinite cheer this holiday season. I do runner themed holiday cards. That's a good idea. Uh, does anyone else does is that a thing? Do people make that? I don't know. It seems nice. Uh, very festive packaging. Emoji holiday uh, like tissue paper, and then a nice little sticker in here. I do like the presentation. Is nice here. Okay, this is the 2023 limited edition holiday box. Surviving the holidays is hard, requires preparation and endurance. Requires this box. Okay, you can learn more about this stuff. Hey, if you guys want to learn more about it, hit that QR code right there. Um, all right, what do we got in here? We got from Prana. Oh, a little headband. I could use this. This is nice. A little camo action for the headband. Prana. I like that. Uh, we got some food in here. We've got uh, barbells, plant-based protein, 15 grams of protein, no added to sugar, hazelnut, and nougat. That actually sounds really good. Uh, we'll go through it all, and then we'll figure out what I'm going to eat first. You, you guys can pick. This is Kate's Real Food, dark chocolate cherry almond. Oh, this is a good box, guys. It's like a granola bar. It says real food on here, gluten-free. Uh, we've got scratch. 
Sour Cherry Energy Chews, Sport Fuel. Uh, dark Chocolate Bar. I don't know that this is running specific. It does have a wolf on the back, so it goes with the animal theme for today, but Cranberry and Almond Chocolate Bar. I think I might just give this one to my wife. She loves dark chocolate. Uh, we've got Chai Untapped Waffle. And then I got one more food item in here. We got, this is a giant cookie. Larry, 16 grams protein, the complete cookie. I've never had a Lenny and Larry's cookie. I see them all over the place. All right, what do we got in here? Um, should we eat first or should we eat something first and then we'll get to the rest of the box? Let's eat something first. I really want to eat. Do you guys have any opinions? Mm. Eliza calls it the toothpaste cookie. It's a toothpaste cookie? Oh, chocolate mint. Is that why you say it is? Mm. All right. Matthias says barbell bars are good. I haven't had that flavor, though. All right. I want to go with the barbells bar. Um, especially when I travel, I just because it's hard to buy stuff that's if, like when you're at an airport and stuff, it's hard to get anything that's not like a ham and cheese sandwich or a turkey and cheese sandwich. I don't love eating like all bars all day, but you know, if as long as that's kind of where I'm at, uh, I'd like to mix it up. Mm, this is 220 calories. It's a big bar, so 220 calories not a lot. 110 milligrams of sodium, 27 grams of carbs, 15 grams of protein, 10 fats. Oh, this looks tasty. This looks like candy. Oh, it smells delicious. This is good. The hazelnuts give it a little bit of a sweet crunch. The new it gives it chewiness. It doesn't taste like a candy bar. I mean, it kind of does, but... It's more, mm, I'm trying to think, what kind of bar does this remind me of? It does kind of have that health food bar consistency. It's good though, and I'm super hungry. I like this one a lot. I could eat a bunch of these. I think I'm definitely going to have to buy some of these. These are good. Are they gluten free, or is there gluten in here? Let's see, um, oh, it contain. It may contain gluten. It does contain soybeans and hazelnuts. I'm trying to think. My wife is gluten free, so I was thinking she might really like these. I don't know. I really like it. Matthias says the chocolate cookie dough is the best, in my opinion. All right. Hmm. That's good. That's good. I don't have to buy some of Okay, let's see what else we got in here. We got some muscle therapy. It's called Punch Gunk. Punch Gunk. Relieve sore muscles and joint stress. What's in here? It doesn't tell you what's in here. Um, it's a concentrated active recovery bath that reduces biomarkers of oxidative stress and accelerates recovery. Drop one pouch into filled bathtub. Pouch and bath powder will dissolve. Oh, you just drop this whole thing in there. Really? The pouch and the bath powder dissolve simultaneously. Enter the tub and enjoy punch gunk muscle therapy. It says it relieves muscle sore and muscles, sore muscles and joint stress. I'm sure. To, I mean, maybe I have to go to the website, but like without saying like what's in here, I just feel like I'm sure it's not a clean sport problem, but it just makes me nervous. We've got um, Ecolips sugar, sugar scrub. Maybe I'll give this one to my kids. What is lip scrub? I don't know what this is. It's for exfoliating your dry, rough lips with organic fair trade certified sugar. Well, organic coconut, olive, and jojoba oils. 
moisturize and protect your pout. Gently rub on lips, wipe off or lick off the remaining sugar. Manufactured in the USA in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. There you go. I don't know that I'll use this one. Maybe it's just not for me. Um, all right, we got some drip drop. What? Is, oh, okay. It's just smaller packages. I have the bigger, like there. It looks, it feels like there's the sleeves in there. But this is fruit punch and watermelon. The best, some of the best flavors. I've been really enjoying drip drop. They keep sending me stuff. Uh, and it's been, it's really good on trips too. Whenever I'm traveling, it's just it dissolves real easy. And then we have. I think this maybe is the reason why they're saying it's good for the holidays. It's called Before You Start. BYS. It's recovery for the social for the social drinker. Herbal dietary supplement to aid with recovery after a night out. Liver health and hydration. The herbal formula contains DHM. I'm afraid I don't know what that is. GMC dash ALC. I don't know what that is either. Korean dendropanax leaves. I understand two of those three words. Ginseng and turmeric root. Okay. So what is this? Um, is it, a, what are your guesses? Is this a powder, a chewable, or a pill? It's a, what's in here? I don't know. I don't know. Tear open the packet and you pour it. They're, they're pebbles into your mouth and swallow with water. I don't have water here, guys. Uh, but I do have coffee. It's like Pop Rocks, maybe? I don't know. That's... I'm not saying I'm not going to try it, but... The... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Will that work? Do you think that'll work? Yeah, these are apertures. A lot, of, a lot of left field with the pebbles. Do we need to open that up? I think we need to open that up and look at it. Okay. All right. Let's open it up. Oh. And drop the pellet. Oh, they look like... Whoa, guess what color these are. I thought that they'd be clear, but they are, I think, green. There's a bunch of them. Are you supposed to just eat these? It smells like something that you would tell a child not to eat. It's like grape nuts. There's a lot in here, guys. Now it's starting to taste like grass. I feel like I've eat. I'm, I feel like I'm eating athletic greens. I'm getting the turmeric now. Spicy. Not spicy, spicy, but like there's a pungentness to it. Yeah, what's funny is I was just talking about this. I don't know about this other punch gunk thing because of a clean sport perspective. And in this, I was just like, I don't know. I'll eat it. Oh, woo. Ah, I'm getting like ginseng and turmeric. Ah. Ah. That was not good. Ah. Uh, ooh. Uh, this is not good. This is not good. I needed a lot, a lot more water. It's all in my teeth now. Was I supposed to chew it or swallow it? I don't think I should have chewed it. Now it's all in my teeth. I'm trying to like gargle with coffee. I chase it down with a hazelnut and nougat barbells bar. Mm. 
Yeah, Tony's like, I don't think you're supposed to chew it. Like, Are you supposed to chew, though? Where's the instructions? Oh, I was supposed to just swallow it. That's a problem. Take one packet before <laughs> while drinking. <laughs> Throw up in the packet, pour the contents into mouth, and swallow with water. Ugh. Now I guess I gotta go tie one on and see how I feel in the morning. I think it's mental, but my stomach hurts right now. Yeah, this box is an adventure. <laughs> Kevin wants to know if I chew my daily multivitamins. I don't take a multivitamin. Sorry, I just like ate the rest of that bar and there's just a lot of it, but I needed to get that ginseng and turmeric flavor out of my mouth. Oh. That was a weird, that was like a weird flashback flavor too. Hmm. All right. Um, the reason why I don't take multivitamins, by the way, is I've mentioned in other videos a long time ago, how I used to have vertigo really bad. When I had vertigo, I always thought, well, clearly something's wrong with my body. Something's off. I'm not eating right or whatever. Let's take a multivitamin to just at least cover the bases, make sure I'm getting everything I need. Taking a multivitamin regularly always made things worse. So that's kind of why I don't take one. At this point, everything that I stopped doing or started doing when I no longer got dizzy, I've kept. That's why I'm vegetarian still. That's why I still run a lot. Like those are two big, and I stopped taking multivitamins. Those are like the the the, the life changes that I made. All kind of at the same time. And I don't care which one of those three is or isn't the one that fixed the vertigo, but I don't really, I, very rarely do I get it. I might have like a, a little tiny mini episode once every, maybe once a year, but they're not nearly as bad as they used to be. So, all right. Andy, Adam Torres says, was any of the vertigo related to inner ear issues? They couldn't figure it out. I went to an ear guy. I went to a neurologist. I went to an eye specialist. Um, and all of them were like, here's a two or three things we think it is, but we're not sure. It doesn't really fit anything. No one could figure it out. All right, one last thing in here. Uh, we've got Protect immuni Liquid Immunity Formula. Tear Pro Protect. No powder, no mess. Oh boy. It's a mixed berry immunity of natural vitamin C, zinc, vitamin D, and echinacea. It's a liquid supplement. Again, guys, if you're if you're a person that is gonna get drug tested, uh, I'm not you know looking at these things ahead of time. So before you get any of this stuff, check that. Um, but here, it looks like a little, um, it looks kind of like what the drip drop comes in in terms of the little sachets, um, but it's liquid inside. So it's like, or it's like the way they think of it, it's like a miniature untapped maple syrup energy, uh, gel thing. Um, so it comes out as a liquid, probably liquid concentrate and you pour this into your water. I'm not going to eat this right now, guys. I've eaten too many things already. Um, but yeah, veteran owned, USA made, no sugars and artificial sweeteners. Mixes instantly. And it has uh, zero calories, zero carbs, 90 mil just vitamin C, zinc and vitamin D and echinacea. Now I do take uh, emergency every once in a while. 
That's not really a multivitamin, but yeah. Um, yeah. So there's that. I'll I'll definitely try this. Let's see how it goes. Um, but yeah. Let's see if I like it or not. That's what that's everything that was in the box, guys. Um this BYS stuff though, that was an adventure. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't I don't know what the DHM and I don't know what the GMC GMT ALC is, so yeah, I don't know. Uh the last box had some pretty good snacks and stuff in there, and then it had a like an L carnitine drink mix, which I was like I don't know that that's been, I think drinkable L-carnitine is permitted under safe sport, but like, uh, you can't inject it. I know you can't do that. That's against the rules, but a drinkable L-carnitine, but I feel like L-carnitine messes people up. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I don't, I don't keep too close a tab on the nutrition science, but I'd say most of the stuff in here I'm going to use. So that's the runner box for today. <sighs> Andrew Scott says, if you're looking for injectables, that's a different kind of box. <laughs> <clears throat> and Vanessa says, there's no running socks in the box? There were no running socks in the box. Which I feel like uh, it's, an, it's an easy add-in. But I guess then you have to worry about sizes and stuff. But yeah. Um, I'm still kind of hungry now, though. Should I eat something else? All right. Daniel Estrella says, hey, go, a running question. Have you had a stretch of multiple months without rest days versus with rest days? Any insights on benefits? Um, yeah, the benefit is if you want to run streak, there are many great reasons to run streak. I don't think any of them are physiological. Like, they're not fitness related. Run streaks is more about like, I enjoy the streak. It's motivating for me to keep going. I find pleasure in problem solving of how do I keep running? I've met people through my run streak. Those are great reasons to run streak. Another great reason to run streak, and probably the most important reason, is because you feel like it. Now, I don't schedule a lot of rest days into my calendar. Usually, like, my my life makes me schedule them in there. Not because I'm so run down for, and, like, I'm injured, but, like, I'm traveling and because of when my flights are and how long they are, by the time I have to leave and the time I have to arrive, I just won't run that day. Or maybe it's because my travel day is also the day after a marathon, so I'll take some rest days after a marathon. You know, so I do things like that. Um, but I also, like, if you are, depending on how many miles you want to run for your training block, you might not schedule any rest days or at least days of no activity. But maybe your rest day is a cross training day. Or maybe your rest day is just lower mileage, just easy running. So that's kind of where I am at. So I don't schedule rest days unless my body is telling me, hey, I would like one. So that's kind of how I have. Uh, that's kind of how I feel about it. Adam Fierce says, I used to think run streaks were silly. However, someone said that being able to maintain a streak means you're not overtraining. Hmm. I think someone can certainly overtrain still and run streak, but it is a good kind of like general rule. I, excuse me, I suppose. And in that sense, it makes sense. But I think of like the person that I know that's run streaking, like probably the best, is Hella Sadib. And he's got like more than five years of running together put together and like he ran the day after he ran Leadville he ran the next day you know and I'm like that's not healthy for anybody I'm not saying it's wrong for him to do it and I don't think he ran far or for very long but like he ran enough for whatever however he's defying as a continuation of the run streak you know and so there are certainly those situations where like you know him doing that was not to make sure he wasn't overtraining. And I, did, I think he did the same thing after Western States this year, too. Um, but I can understand how you're saying that, like, well, if you're planning on seven days a week of training, that means you can't really overdo it on any one day. And I see a lot of marathon plans where 
kind of related to that Adam, is like i see a lot of marathon plans where it's like 20 mile long run on the weekend and it's going to be a super hard workout inside that 20 mile long run and then a two days off and for me i feel like that's way too much time if you have to take two days off of something during the middle of your marathon training block unless it was a half marathon pr attempt you know what i mean that's too much like i i feel like you shouldn't go that deep into the well very often you know and so i think i think i hear what the reasoning behind that statement is you know uh, Richard Wilson says, I managed a six week run streak and decided it wasn't for me. The stress of worrying about missing. Yeah, I have, I obsess over things already. And I just feel like that was, that's something that like every once in a while, I will just be like, today's a good day to take a break. Just so that way I don't get the number never gets too high. Because if I got to like 100 days, I'd be like, oh boy, I'm at 100 now. I don't know that I've ever got I think I've gotten to like 100 before. I know I've gotten to like 60. Adam says, well, you know, Lennon and McCartney did eight days a week. <laughs> um, by the way, I feel like I, I don't, I don't relate it to that. Um, I don't, I, I have four buttons on my soundboard over here. So I have four sets of sounds that I can have. We have the cowbell sound. We have the running shoe question of the day sound from Pee Wee's Playhouse. Then we got the drums that we just heard. And we also have applause. If I'm going to make a hello good dog sound, I think I get rid of the applause, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. C Sound Fan says, as far as the run streaking goes, I've run the entire year every day. Really? Almost done. And then what are you going to run on January 1? Are you going to rest on January 1 or are you going to keep going? See, that's the hard part. How do you end it? How do you end it? I feel like if you're going to end a uh, run streak, you got to do it on purpose. Doing it on accident seems heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And Frank says, I've run for the last 92 days straight, and I'm not counting myself on a streak. I would say that's a streak. I'd say once you get past like 15 days, it's kind of a streak. It's a lot. Um, and Tony says, speaking of hello, good dog, aren't you due for a new fur baby? Uh, I, I had a dream that I got it. I had a dream that a pro, I, I don't remember which pro, but a pro runner gave me a dog, like a marathoner gave me a dog. That's a weird dream. I want to, I want to say it was Des Linden gave me a dog. That makes sense that that those like random synapses would fire to connect into a narrative in my dream because i just saw i met des for the first time in texas this this year and then i came home and it was a long week and we came home uh we came home and apparently now in the elf on the shelf universe there's also an elf on a shelf dog which you are allowed to touch the dog you're not allowed to touch the elf but you can touch the dog and so I think when I came home, then I had a dream that Des Linden gave me a dog. Um, yeah, but I, I don't know. We, we still have to figure out. Uh, my daughter is still allergic to dogs. That's a thing. And um, she recently had her like year. They, she has a yearly appointment with her allergist. And uh, this year, her numbers in terms of the her blood work they could test your blood for responsiveness to stuff. And the blood work response to dog was very low. So low that they're going to try and do a skin prick test at some point. So we have to just schedule that. And if she's not, doesn't respond, then I will probably get a dog. Which I'm like excited about and also just like, oh, I have a lot of emotional baggage, I guess, on it. But also it's like, oh, it's so much work. <sighs> But it's nice. But um, yeah, so maybe, maybe not. All right, with that being said, all right. Um, who's, who's got a dog that I haven't said hi to? I saw some dog names up earlier. I'm sorry, but can you um, t type them up again? Um, <laughs> Kevin, while, while you're giving some dog names, 
says Calvin says if you've heard of you've heard of Elf on the Shelf now get ready for B A B A A in your H O A. I feel like, except for the fact that there would certainly be a cease and desist letter about it, but imagine if Steven Genoza made a whole series of action figures, like BAA action figures. <laughs> that would be amazing. And they all look like Elf on the Shelf, but wearing like the BAA costumes that Steven Genoza has. That would be amazing. Who who knows how to sew here? We, we got to figure this out. <clears throat> Um. All right, we got one dog. All right, hello, good dog. We're gonna go for it right now. We got some dog names here. Uh, first dog is Rain Runners dogs. Billy, Billy, are you listening? Billy, come here. Billy, <laughs> Billy, Billy. <laughs> Billy's a good dog. Mark Peterson says, um, Bernie's a good girl, but she isn't listening to the live stream. Okay, well. Hi to Bernie. Um, Miguel has dogs. Name's Oliver or a dog. Oliver, aka Ollie or Ollie Bear. Ollie Bear. Ollie Bear. Ollie Bear. Come here. Come here. Good dog, Ollie. <laughs> Serious runners that's hold my beer. <laughs> I feel like that's official. BA action figurines are coming out. Action figures, action figures, not figures, they're not dolls. Action figures. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because <laughs> then, if you had them, Steven, if you had, imagine it. Imagine if you had BA action figures and they were just little elf on the shelf, like sock puppet type of things, like Woody from, like, uh, from Toy Story. You can have them hanging on your shoulder the next time you have an internal debate. <laughs> about whether it's appropriate to wear your BAA jacket to the shakeout run, you know, like. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, C-Town fans got a dog named Miller. That's a good dog name. Miller, Miller. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. Miller, Miller. And we got um, in. See, Tim has another dog. Zoe Bear. Zoe Bear. Zoe Bear. Who's a Zoe Bear? Where is a Zoe Bear? <laughs> All right. Calvin. Calvin. All right. Well, let's do what before we get to this. Let's do one more. We'll end with Martha's Rabbit. Hello, good rabbit. Zychick. I, th I think this is Zychick right here. Hi, Zychick. How are you? <laughs> All right. Um, let's get to. Um, this and i think after this we'll have to end it for today we'll do this all right if we get ba action figures we got dq dan who will happily dq the charity runner for taking a picture of the course and sharing on their social did that runner not read the rules that'd be funny we'd have to have, oh we'd have to have all the like a ba action figure would have to be like the baa character right with the massage gun that would be have to be like an, an accessory right uh we'd have to have the guy that wears their boston jacket to the expo which i feel like you, there are times where it's appropriate to wear i'm not hey, look here here's the thing if you want to wear your boston marathon jacket wear it anywhere you want as much as you want totally cool totally cool um but i do think it's funny when people i, I think it's exactly where you're supposed to wear it at, at an expo for another race but it also is kind of funny at the same time um that you know, but I think maybe a character with the Boston uh, marathon jacket. I think it'd have to be something ridiculous, like uh, like the lawyer who ran Boston once. And so it's like a guy in a suit with a Boston marathon jacket on top. See, there we go. That's another one. What other characters would there be? And oh, let's do the, let's end, end this one. Um, Matt Anderson says, what shoe names would be good as dog names? Mm, I think uh, Pegasus is a good one because you always name a Peggy. Um, let's see. Is Nimbus a good one? No, because then it's Nimby for short, and that's weird. Uh, what other, what what shoe names would be good? 
Mm, Rebel. I think Rebel would be a good one. I like that one. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. Is there, is there more? Who, who else is, who, who's got one? Max? Yeah, Max would be a good one. Uh, Ghost, Vanessa Martinez says Ghost is a good one. Riggs Rico says Takumi. There was a restaurant in Sacramento named Takumi, and I wanted to go eat there. I didn't have time. Um, let's see. Matter says Trabuco. I kind of like Trabuco. It's a lot. I feel like three syllables is a lot for a dog, though. Maybe. Um, although there's some times where three syllables works. Um, who said Clifton? Rainrunner said Clifton. Clifton would be a good one. Dorothy said Solomon for a good dog name. I think that would definitely work as well. Calvin Hall says GT2000 version 12. <laughs> uh, and c Time Avenger says Hoka. I feel like Bondi, any of the Hoka names, Bondi, Rincon, I think Rincon, all the Hoka names, probably fine, good. Rocket, you know, that's a good one. Mika Katai says, I, someone I know had a dog named Kinvara. That, did they name it specifically after the after the shoe? I don't know. Adam says, isn't Max the name of the dog in the Grinch that stole Christmas? It is. And Mike C says, Boston, of course. Mike, I hope your tire situation is okay. Mike had a picture of himself today with his, he, was fixed, he had a flat tire. Ooh, Usama said, um, Nitro. That's a good one. Yeah, I like that. Alphagans says, Ultra. What did you name your dog Ultra Forward Experience? Now, there you go. <laughs> And video says triumph the insult comic. <laughs> uh, Brian Guzman says Topo. Topo would be a really good one. And Mika says the name for the dog Kinvara was not after the shoe. There's an area in Ireland. Is that where the name of the Kinvara comes from? Hmm. Stephen76, are there dog names from midsoles? FF Turbo. <laughs> Helion, uh, would that work? Boost, Boost would be a good one. Um, Nitro, Loft, DNA Loft version, <laughs> DNA Loft version three. Uh, <laughs> Kushlon, that would be kind of weird. Kushlon would be a good name for a marijuana strain, I feel like. Um, but not 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 for a dog, probably. Mm, Daniel says Zumex. Martha says Piba. Yeah. Andrew Scott says, hey, meet my dog. React thanks. <laughs> uh, oh, Vomero. There we go. Vomero would be a good one. Yeah. That'd be a fun one. All right. That was a lot of fun, guys. I appreciate you playing along on that one. Uh, tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow. I don't know. Hopefully by tomorrow I'll have my Ghost Max video posted. And then I think that'll be it for my 2023 shoe reviews. And then we'll go into 2024. Uh, four stuff, but before then, we'll do my year end wrap up. So we'll do my top five, like best shoes overall, top five racing shoes. We'll go start getting into those to wrap up the year video wise. But first, I got to do one more 2023 review. That's going to be the Ghost Max, and hopefully, it'll be done tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday, right? Yeah, we're going to shoot for tomorrow, but we'll see. Either way, I'll see you guys again, 1 p.m. Central Time here, right here. Uh, and in the meantime, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.